in the up position, I've got like the kind of martialish voicing. Down is like that Fender voicing. Now in the middle, this is really cool. This is something that I only just really thought of. You essentially get a really close replica or clone of an EP3 preamp. I want to show you how to install this really simple mod. It only costs about 10 cents and it totally transforms your amp. Now this mod is a universal mod so that means it works across loads of different amplifiers and that's the sort of mods I want to do on this channel. Ones that can work across lots of different amps and aren't just model specific. Now if you're new to this sort of thing this is a great mod because we're not dealing directly with any dangerous voltages and because it's so simple this mod is actually often overlooked. Modding your amp doesn't have to be ultra complex to get some really really awesome results. I literally just installed this mod the other day in one of my customers amps and it just sounded so much better for the sort of style that my customer plays. And that's why I'm making this video today because I essentially forgot just how good this mod actually sounds. Okay, so what is this mod and how do we install it? Well, first, before we get into that, we need to work out which section of the amp we're working on so all of this makes sense. Right, so when we're talking about V1, we're referring to a preamp tube, and it's most likely one of these, a 12AX7 or an ECC83. Whatever country you come from, it's the same tube. Normally, V1 is your first amplification stage inside your amplifier, so it provides like a foundation that everything else is going to be built on as the signal flows through the different stages inside your amplifier, so it's pretty important. So here's the V1 stage of a Fender amp. Now you can see that there is a lot that you can do here. There's a lot that you can change, but for the best bang for buck, as in the biggest results for the least amount of work and cost, is definitely replacing just one part. And that is this little guy here, the cathode bypass capacitor. The easiest way to think about what this capacitor does is it's a big part of what sets the initial EQ curve of your amp. And it's super important because it gives the amp much of its vibe or feel. Now let's look at another schematic. So this is a Fender one. If I pull this one across here, here is a Marshall schematic. And you can see you've got your cathode resistor and then your bypass capacitor on this one is a 0.68 UF or a 680 nanofarad capacitor. And that is going to give quite a different sound. And obviously these resistors here, the cathode and the plate, are going to change the sound as well if you alter these. For the best value for money, you're going to get the most effect from changing this capacitor right here. If we change this capacitor, the 680 nanofarad capacitor, to the same value as what is in this Fender schematic, so in the Fender schematic here, the value is a 22 UF capacitor. It's not gonna make your Marshall magically sound like a Fender, but it's definitely gonna give more of that Fender style vibe and vice versa as well. I guess you're saying, why can't I just use the amps EQ to get a similar result? Well, if you look through the schematic here, you're coming out of V1, and then you've got two more preamp stages before you even hit the EQ. So the EQ can only manipulate what it's being fed. So by changing that cathode capacitor, the information this EQ is being given is going to be completely different. So you can only really approximate it. And it's the same as people saying, why can't I just use an EQ pedal in the front end before I even get to that valve? Why can't I do that? Will that just give me the same result? And it won't. It's still quite a complex relationship you've got going on here within this valve. And by changing this capacitor, you not only change the EQ curve, but the harmonic content, the way the whole amp feels and reacts. By putting an EQ in front, yeah, you can get it to sound different. I suppose it's kind of like you can't EQ a Les Paul to sound like a Strat. You can kind of do that, but it'll just give you an approximation of that sound. So it's a similar sort of thing. So what you need to do now is you need to find your amp schematic and you need to check where your V1 capacitor is. So what are we doing today? Today, let's get the schematic here. So here's the amp I'm going to use today. It's a JCA20, a Jet City JCA20, the same thing I've been modding the whole time. I feel a bit sorry for it. <laughs> here is the first stage. So you want to find your input jack. This one goes through a coupling capacitor first. That's not normal. Normally you just go straight into that grid resistor there. And then you're going to find your V1. And here is mine. And here's my cathode resistor and there's my cathode capacitor right next to it bypassing that resistor that's why it's called a cathode bypass capacitor so that is the capacitor i'm going to change so what i'm going to do now is we'll get into the amp and i will remove that capacitor and replace it <laughs> 
So once you've pulled the schematic and you know where the capacitor is or the number is, just got to find it inside the amp. It's almost always very close to the input jack. Here's our input jack here. Now remember, if you are opening up an amp, please check out my other video on how not to die when working on tube amps. It's just about safety around tube amps. Make sure your capacitors are drained. It's not plugged in, you know, kind of logical stuff, but just be so careful, okay? I know we're not working directly with dangerous voltage, but dangerous voltage is not too far away from where we're working, so you just want to be very careful. Right, so it says on my schematic it should be C27, parallel to R29. Here's R29 here. Now, it should be connected directly to pin number 8. So if we're counting around clockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Skipped a few there, and that confirms it for me right there. So I know this capacitor here, this is the one that I'm going to be wanting to change out. And what I'll do is I'm going to actually put this on a, on a switch just so we can have a listen to a few different arrangements. Plus I've got a kind of a cool idea I really, really want to try. So I'm kind of excited to do that. So I'm going to drill another hole. I feel sorry for this amp. We're drilling holes all through it for a whole bunch of different mods. But anyway, I'm going to put another one probably about here somewhere. I'll put a little switch in that should be kind of cool okay so we just got to desolder that off the board and then put the new one on right so i've installed this mod in the amp on a switch just so i can change between a couple of variations so you can hear what they sound like so in the up position i've got like the kind of marshallish voicing down is like that fender voicing now in the middle this is really cool this is something that i only just really thought of and i gave it a crack and man it sounds awesome in the middle you essentially get a really close replica or clone of an EP3 preamp, but a tube-based one. So the EP3, if you're not familiar with it, is a is the Echoplex um, unit, and a lot of great guitarists got their their sound by running through just the preamp part and not actually using the the echo at all. And it's actually a very very close replica when you look at the schematic versus the tube stage. And all you've got to do is put a 22 nanofarad capacitor in parallel with that resistor. That becomes the cathode bypass capacitor, a 22 nanofarad one. So in the up position there, I've got a 680 nanofarad. I've got a 22 UF down the bottom. And then I've got a 22 nanofarad one when it's in the middle position. And far out, biggest surprise of the week for me. It sounds awesome. It's possibly one of my favorites now. So I'm really excited for you guys to hear this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this up into the studio. We're going to plug it in and I will get a clean sound and sort of a dirty sound of each of these different um, modes, just so you can kind of hear what I mean, how it gives the vibe. It definitely, st it'll still sound like a Jet City, but it's going to have more of a fendery sort of vibe that big warm i want to give you a hug vibe the marshall is that sort of more aggressive barky sort of sound and the ep3 preamp the the classic thing about the ep3 is that the original one the one everyone likes there was actually a mistake in the design they actually overcompensated a little bit and that's why everyone loves it it kind of colors your sound in this really nice way it adds a little bit of crystal um, sweet top end but that's all before it goes through all the rest of the stages of the amp and that's what makes it so cool so if you've ever played with one of those EP boosters or one of those EP3 preamp pedals they are really really fun anyway let's take this up and have a jam through it and see what it sounds like so we're going to go through these three modes I'm going to run the EQ flat and we're going to do a clean edge of breakup and like a duty sound so this is in the Fender mode right now. So this is our clean sound. Okay, so essentially I've just pushed that gain up just a little bit. This is the high gain sound for the Fender because there's so much um, low end being pushed through this amp. It can, it's probably going to sound a little woolly, to be honest. But okay, I kind of like it. <laughs> So 
So this is the Marshall clean sound. Definitely got a bit more of that mid push, I suppose. <laughs> This is a, with a little bit more gain. You can hear it straight away. That was actually pretty cool. So this is the high gain Marshall sound. This is a really cool sounding voicing. This is that middle voicing, which is essentially an EP3 preamp. I mean, it's not really exactly the same, but it's very, very close. Sounds really nice. I really like that sound. It's just got this beautiful um, top end to it. It is really appealing in the room. I, I really hope it's translating over YouTube. Right, so edge of breakup, overdrive -y type sounds. <laughs> It is really sweet. It's got a really, really cool sort of sweet tone to it. <laughs> to be honest, when um, if I was going to put this amp back, I'd just leave it in this mode permanently. It just works really, really well with this Jet City JCA20. I think it sounds really nice. On all the sounds, clean sound, edge break up, let's do the heavy sound. <laughs> to me, it's got just the most definition. Sounded really cool. I want to stress again that there is just so much to modding amps and once you understand how each section works and what all the parts are doing, you can tailor your own mods to get the results that you want. Now I know this mod is pretty simple but I think it's quite a powerful mod because of how versatile it is and how you can use it to shape other stages as well, not just the V1 stage. Each stage inside your amp is essentially its own little EQ and it adds a lot of other elements along the way, so replacing that cathode bypass capacitor really influences all those factors. So please subscribe if you like this sort of video. I've definitely got lots more of this sort of stuff coming. Now, if you have a go at this mod, let me know down in the comments, and we'll catch you in the next video.